Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're going a bit off course with our colour and chat. I've wanted a little diversion and I'm bringing to you this very battered and well-loved book and this is Enchanted Forest by Johanna Basford. My aim is to have this book completed by Christmas time and I'm nearly there so I need to focus my efforts on getting this done which is why we're here today. I have kept this book mostly to myself just so I've got something of my own because I tend to share most of my arty pursuits either through YouTube or Instagram and it's nice just to keep something back for yourself. I just want to show you where we're at. Now this is the page that we're doing today and aside from this here I have been working in this book exclusively front to back I have this image left to do and I have the back cover left to do before I go on to the very last page in the book which I have called the DDs and that is the dreaded dragons which look like this and that is going to take me forever. As far as I'm concerned this is the last sort of proper page and we'll see what we can get done. So we'll zoom in a little bit. In addition to the book, I have my Tagal sharpener. I have to apologise for my dirty nails today. I've been helping the boys outside and I have scrubbed them, but they look a bit grubby. So I'm, I'm terribly sorry about that. So uh, yeah, in addition to the book, I have my Tagal sharpener and that is set on a number two setting. And that is because today we are working with Prismacolors. Now I haven't used my Prismacolor pencils on the channel in quite a while, so I'm looking forward to it. Aside from my polychromos, this is the set of pencils that I'm most familiar with and most comfortable with. I do have a pencil extender to hand as well because I do have a lot of short Prismacolors. Because they're really soft core, they wear down quickly and we tend to go through them fairly quickly. Uh, you know, just sort of doing your thing. So let's just have a wee think about this. I do want to stick to more kind of traditional colours just because when it comes to foliage, I really haven't on this side. Uh, this was a, a, a schoolgirl error pursuit. I did this with really cheap watercolours and they're like really chalky. And uh, when I look at it now, I think, oh my goodness, this is terrible. And look at the difference between this side and this side. So I did this way back at the beginning of my colouring journey. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can make up for it with this page. So I want to start fairly simple. And this image is, it is symmetrical. So whatever we do on this side, I'm going to do on this side. And normally I would work right to left, especially with Prismacolors because they are very smudgy. But I'm just going to match them up as I go so that it does look equal. So I may have to put a piece of paper under my hand so that I don't smudge what I'm doing on this side. So I'm going to start with one of my favourites and that is Chartreuse. And I'm just going to get going up here. Now the nice thing about Prismacolor pencils is that you can press down really hard on one layer and get really rich and vibrant colour if you aren't the, the layering sort and that's why most people love Prismacolors. I am not that person though so we are going to build up colour in my usual technique and style. So what I'm thinking is here there's lots of different types of leaves which I've become very familiar with because obviously I've coloured most of this book now. I'm quite familiar with Johanna's different different styles when it comes to colouring leaves. So what I'm doing here is I'm just picking out all the ones that I've got a thin border around the outside and I'm going to keep them all the same and it's just to bring a little bit of continuity to what I'm doing. So we'll make a start with that and we can pick these out. It stops you getting bored as well because you can get to a stage especially when you've been through the whole book and there is such a thing as leaf burnout and if you have coloured an Enchanted Forest or uh, Secret Gardens the other one Secret Garden? Yeah, Secret yeah, secret Garden. And Magical Jungle. You know, there's a high chance that you're going to get fed up colouring leaves. I am so glad to be filming this video today. I am in an absolutely foul mood. Um, I have got a sore stomach that has come out of nowhere. Absolutely no idea why. I haven't eaten anything weird. I haven't been doing anything weird. And this only started like two hours ago. I'm having major software problems and... IT problems with my work and I've lost out on about eight hours worth of work. I will get compensated for that to a degree but it's really frustrating because I have lots of work that I should be on with and I can't get any of it done and I can't do anything until IT get back to me so I feel as if I've just wasted the last day. Uh, it's, it's not cool. I'm not, not a happy camper at all. So yeah, I was kind of hoping that this might be a nice way to cheer myself up a little bit. 
that's the plan anyway. That is the plan. Just making sure I've got the same thing going on on both sides here. Hmm. Now we're coming down here and we've got these ones as well. Now just the usual situation here. I'm not being careful just because it's my first layer. I really don't need to be paying too much attention to what's going on here because we'll, we'll soon sort it out as we go along. But it's just, this is good as well because it gives you a nice starting point. Okay, we'll do this one down the bottom as well. Why not? Why not? Okay, so I'm going to grab my apple green next. And now I can work between the chartreuse, which I've left quite blunt, and the apple green. And we're going to make these sections a little bit more interesting. So I'll just start at the bottom here. Now there, there is quite a high temptation to press really hard with these Prisma colours, just because they are so soft. And um, I have to admit that I'm trying to resist that temptation as much as possible. It's so easy just to smoosh everything down. But if we take our time with some layers here and really blend these together, we can get some really, really vibrant colour here. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, that is the nicest thing about Prisma colours. The colours are very, very saturated, pigmented. There we go, just like that. Beautiful, we're off to a good start. I'll zoom in. I'm trying to find the optimal zoom point here. Uh, my autofocus seems to be a bit temperamental. And I've found that the closer you are to something, the harder time it's having. It's just like has a little hissy fit to itself. Now, interestingly, I did update the firmware on the camera not that long ago. Uh, so I don't know whether that's got something to do with the belt. It's like a driver or something I updated. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to keep glancing up just to make sure that it's not just totally biffed out on me and <laughs> decided it doesn't want to play anymore. I'm just leaving a tiny little white spot a bit further up here. But that's looking fairly, fairly good. I'll avoid putting a white spot in on these smaller parts because it's just a bit fiddly. I'm actually going to have to sharpen this chartreuse. <laughs> That's better. Sometimes when I get a crumbly core on these Prisma colours, I put my Tagal down to a number one. And that's just to see if I can get it back into any sort of point. And that usually works. So we're, uh, we're back on track. So I've had confirmation about my internet situation. Uh, finally, I've been waiting quite a while. And I have been approved for better internet. Yes, yeah, so that means that we will be getting faster internet, which means eventually we will be able to do some live streams, which I'm quite excited about. But also, it means that my day-to-day my -day interneting is going to be significantly easier. And also that if I'm uploading a YouTube video, Mr. Jem will still be able to watch Netflix. Because just now what happens is I'm trying to upload videos when he's not around. Because one of his favourite things to do to relax is watch movies. Like Mr. Jem is a total film buff. He really, really is. And uh, there's been nights where, you know, obviously I, I, I do my proper job during the day and he comes in and wants to watch a film at night and I'm like shouting through the house at him like, don't put Netflix on, you're stealing all the bandwidth, I'm trying to upload a video. Or if I start uploading first and then he tries to watch something, it just doesn't load. <laughs> That's how bad our internet is. So that that is going to alleviate that situation as well. I think it might be a while before it happens though because... They have to wait for the government to approve the the like the, the grant and I don't know when they're actually going to do that so it might be some time. So we shall see uh, as soon as I get any sort of update in that obviously I will update you guys too because a lot of you made quite a lot of noises about maybe enjoying an odd live stream. Uh, as I said before when I did the update video, it's not going to turn into a channel full of, of live streams. That is never my intention. I just There's a lot of factors involved in it. I always think you get a completely different vibe from a live stream than you do from a, you know, a video that was meant always meant to be a video. You know, if, you, if you're watching a live stream back as a video on demand after the fact. It just doesn't have the same feel to it as an intentional video. And I do watch a lot of, of live streamers. I tend to watch on Twitch though. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big Twitch fan. 
and it's great for when I'm doing boring menial admin type work. Okay, so you can see where I'm going with this. I'm going to do the rest of these now and uh, then, <coughs> excuse me, then I'll catch you back up because there's no point in you sitting watching me colour in all these leaves when I'm just doing exactly the same thing. Okay, okay, so we've got those leaves finished now and you can see I've got some nice vibrant colour. And although I have used the same colours in the same sections because this is a symmetrical image, I haven't coloured them symmetrically and I just wanted to point this out just now. I've gone with a, a, what I would call a lazy light source, so there's light coming from over here somewhere in this sort of vicinity. So what I've done is... I've kept all the darker colour to the right hand side of each leaf with the exception of this one but it's just in a place where there's so much going on it wasn't worthwhile trying to sort that out. But if you look down here especially you can see that I've used that apple green on the right hand curve of these and kept the chartreuse more over to the left and I just think it gives a really nice effect without the page being too boring. Not that I think the page is boring, but you know, I mean, the colouring, uh, without the colouring being boring. So what I want to do now is pick out a colour that I can use for the sections round these leaves, or the borders as I call them. And I wanted a, a really fun green, so I'm going to go for peacock green. And I absolutely love, love, love this colour. But uh, you can also use darker shades of grey on top of this as well. It works really well for that. And all that's going to do is let the chartreuse pop out. But I'll incorporate this colour into some of the other leaves as well and we'll darken it down in places. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited about the possibility of live streaming. I think that's going to be really cool. I don't know whether I may live stream on Twitch sometimes as well. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Twitch or not, but it's, it's basically a live streaming platform. So it's, it's a bit like YouTube, but it's all streamers. It's mostly gamers. But there are people who stream art and music. I like to listen to a chap called Charlie Plays Guitars. He is Canadian, surprise, surprise. And he is a very, very talented musician. And I just love listening to him and watching what he's doing. Because he's got a separate cam camera set up for his pedals. So you can see all the effects and everything that he's using as well. And when he's changing them. And he's got a fabulous voice as well. Proper 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 like soul bluesy type voice and that 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 like really presses my buttons there is nothing more attractive than a man with a good singing voice mr jim can't sing <laughs> but yeah I, that's a i find that a very attractive quality in a man <laughs> sing to me that's it i'll do anything you want <laughs> Get this going round here. So I think I'll do the little veins in the adjacent leaves. Oh, adjacent, there's a good word. Again, just to try and bring some sort of continuity to the picture. So at this point, obviously, I'm just doing what I always do. And I'm just mapping out the areas that I'm going to need to work on. And this is quite good because you can stop and pause every now and then and just have a squint at it and see if that's what you actually want. So one of my concerns about the live stream situation is if and when it gets up and running. Well, it's not if now, it's when. It's when. When it gets up and running, I have no idea what time to stream at because, 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 because I have such a broad demographic of you guys uh, between Canada and the States, Europe and a few in Oz and South Africa as well. So I, I realise that there isn't going to be a perfect time to do it, shall we say. But I would like to pick a time where people can come and watch live, you know, if they want to. I'm just deciding where I'm going to go next. I think I'll just come down here just now. Uh, so I was thinking maybe probably late evening UK time. So that is GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. And that would give the sort of, uh, well, the Central the Central American and Canadian states and provinces, you're like, you guys are like eight hours behind us. So if I was streaming at nine o'clock at night, that would be one in the afternoon for you, give or take, you know, an hour or two, depending on where you are. And... In Europe, it's a bit easier because I think at most are maybe three hours in front of us. So even if I did it at nine at night, 
10, 11, oh, that would be midnight for something. Mm. See what I mean? Like, it's, there's a lot of thought that needs to go into it. I want to do the outside of this leaf because it's got a border on it as well. I'm going to do that too. So, yeah, there is, there is you know, a, quite a lot of thought involved in it. But I do think it's one of these things that I'll kind of, like, it'll, I'll work out the kinks as we go along. I think you just have to start and see what happens and, you know, sort of adjust things from there. Because although uh, the, the bulk of my viewership for YouTube are from the UK, the States and Canada, that is not necessarily going to be this case if I start live streaming on a, a semi-regular basis. But again, just because of that time difference. So I may have to adjust that accordingly. I feel as if I should have more of this dark green in this kind of like centre part. I think I might... I might put it on the insides of these leaves here. I, I just feel like I want a trickle of it, you know, all the way down on both sides. So yeah, let's stick that in there just now. And then down here, I don't really have anything till these ones. Mm, okay. Plus as well, it's going to be really good fun to interact with everyone. Catch all up on the chat. One thing I won't be doing is saying hi to every time someone enters into... <laughs> you can tell I've had a lot of time to think about this. I find it quite irritating if I'm watching back a live stream and throughout the entire stream it's like, oh hey such and such, how you doing? It's like that's not what it's all about. So we'll see though. I don't know until I get there. Okay, so bring this up around here. That bit. One. See, we have a lot of these here. I feel we're kind of thin on the ground in the middle, but we're quite heavy with this dark green up this top part as well, so that might look okay too. Don't have anything terribly exciting in other news at in other news at this point. Um, my kitchen is scheduled for demolition <laughs> on the. 26th of October so that's not that far away um so I'm I'm looking forward to that I've made the the joiner promise me that he'll let me put a sledgehammer through the the island <laughs> that's there just now I absolutely hate it and I've hated it since the second we moved in and uh, needless to say when I get my new kitchen I'm not having an island <laughs> so yeah he said that he's going to let me demolish it which will be nice. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I could get some of my frustrations out. Okay, I think we're doing all right here. I can't decide whether the... Oh, I've missed a bit. The distribution of this peacock green is what I want or not. Hmm. It feels really strange colouring in this book and filming it because it's something I never do. This feels, it feels a bit odd. <laughs> I still, I'm still kind of like getting to grips with the fact that I have almost made it to the end. When I first got this book, I had no interest in colouring whatsoever. Uh, it was, it was gifted to me kind of by accident, you know, it, it fell into my lap sort of thing. And I just find it amazing that this book has become such a big part of my life. Um, and also the fact that when I first flicked through it, you know, one of the first couple of times where I'd, I'd just kind of started to get into colouring, I remember looking at these images at the back of the book and being, you know, thinking to myself, there's no way in a month of Sundays I'm ever going to, like, have time or inclination to colour all of these in. And here I am, literally two pages from the end. Uh, it's, it's been emotional. <laughs> So it's it's actually quite nice to be sitting here. And more to the point, it's even more of a feat that I'm sitting here doing this and I've got 5,000 YouTube viewers on a YouTube channel. Again, which, the, you know, that, that was not in existence. It wasn't even a thought in my, my tiny little brain when this book arrived in my in my possession. So, yeah, we've, we've come a long way. But I have had this book for five years. Is it five years? So it's about time it was finished. <laughs> 
when it's finished though I will be doing uh, I, I did it with um, my Inktober drawings last year what I'll do is the day that this is going to be released as a flip through I will do a quick flip through with no commentary for those of you that just want to see all the pictures and maybe get some inspiration but I'm also going to do a, a long commentary because this book really does tell a story aside from the, the story of the Enchanted Forest. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go through that and just talk a little bit about, you know, the sort of progression of the book, as it were. So you can look forward to that. Also as well, I'm, I'm going to put a finished gallery up on the website, on the cave website, in the, the, the sort of inspiration section as well. So that every single coloured picture, so the entire book will be in gallery form as well as video form over on the website if you want to check that out when we get to that stage. Okay. I don't want to add in any more of this darker green anywhere else now that I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, yep, okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's go with that. Let's do it, let's do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix in grass green which has a sort of aqua-esque hint to it. You know, it's got a slightly a slightly um, bluer green in it, which goes really well with this peacock green. And this just makes this colour really, really rich. So I'll show you what I mean up here. I need to give my peacock green a wee sharpen again. Again, it's just two colours that go really nicely together and it's a combination that when I'm doing things like this, you know, when I'm not doing sort of realistic colouring, it's a combination I use all the time. And it's a really fun combination, I like it. But you can see how much that's making the chartreuse just pop out there and that's ideal, that's exactly the kind of thing that we want. I think these stems, though, I'll just use the peacock green there again because it's like such a skinny little area. Mr. Gem has moved all the cows about today, so I can hear a wee bit of mooing going on, um, but Barbara and baby Barbara are back next door to the house again. Not not out the cave window, which is out there, the, the field that actually touches our garden. Um, so I was, I was out saying hello to her this morning and telling her how big her baby had gone. <laughs> I thought Francine was in the same group, but they've been split up, but I remember why. Francine's her other pet cow. Um, well, she's not a pet cow. She's just one of the ones we've named. Uh, but Francine was lame at one point. She had a really, really sore foot. So she had been split off from the group and put in a in a sort of, what, well, what we call like a hospital pen, you know, so that she could be kept an eye on. So she was inside for a while. And when they turned her back out, they put her into the opposite group uh, just because they were adjacent to, to the farm steading at the time and it was just so that they could keep an eye on her so she's ended up inadvertently being swapped to another group which is a shame because I like her but her foot's better that's the main thing but we've still got Barbara Barbara's here and baby Barbara is actually like just a carbon copy of her she really is and she's gorgeous and I want to cuddle her but she's scared of me <laughs> so but now's the time uh, just because we came in when we did you know that the cows were only inside in fact, they were in less than a month when we when we arrived. Um, and these are new cows to us because the cows come with the farm. So we haven't had the chance to sort of build up that trust with them. And when they're housed in the winter, that is the easiest and best time to do it because they're getting fed every day. So if you feed them, even for a week, if you do it consistently and go in and chat to them and not intrude in their space, like not going to the pen with them, but if you just sort of sit in their presence... Cows are very curious animals and they realise quite quickly that you are not going to hurt them and then they start to get nosy and that's how you make friends with them. So that is my mission this this coming winter time is to make friends with some of the cows. I, I have it on good authority um, that there is one cow who is generally very friendly so I'm going to try and befriend her as well. But I would like, to, I would like Barbara to allow me to pet her, her calf. I don't know if she'll ever be that kind of cow because she's quite standoffish <laughs> but I think if we spend some time with baby Barbara then she might let me talk to her that would be good that would be cool I was saying to Mr Gem the other day I really miss the llamas as well at our old farm we had llamas and they were awesome I'm kind of missing them 
I like the llamas. Okay, for these little tiny skinny bits, I'm just gonna use the um, the peacock on its own, just as I did with the stems up here, just because they're just tiny. They're really small. So accuracy is the name of the game here. Try and keep inside the lines. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that or not. That's the, the cow in question that's making a lot of noise. I don't know why she's roaring. So they've just been moved um, into a field that's got plenty of grass in it and that usually makes them quite happy. So I don't know what she's bawling for, that one. I mean, sometimes they do just moo for the sake of it, but generally if the mooing is repeated, it's because there's something wrong. And they're kind of past the stage now where they're overprotective of their calves because their calves are quite big now. Their calves will be, well, some of them will be, will be mm, June, July, August, September. Some of them will be nearly four months old now. So they're not like wee wee buddly babies anymore. They're pretty big. Um, and the mothers tend to get, you know, tend to be a bit more relaxed. So the cows all run about, the calves all run about and they've all made their own friends kind of thing. And they started, you know, making their own wee social group with all their pals. Which is really cute because they all run about together at night. It's usually about six o'clock, uh, which is when it's just kind of just starting to get dark here now. And most of our fields are on a hill, you know, they're on a slope. And you see a group of five or six of the calves and they're going absolutely hell for leather down the hill. And I don't know whether they're racing each other or they're just running about, you know, for fun. But their tails stick straight up in the air like a flagpole. And then the, the, the little tuft at the end kind of like flaps about in the breeze when they're running about. It's hilarious. It's, it's one of the most entertaining things you can watch. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Easily pleased. Right, okay, let's think about what we're doing here. Just going back to the live streaming thing as well, Mr. Jem said to me as well, he says, you better not get a face cam. And I said to him, why not? You know, that that's probably quite a good idea. He says, because then you'll have to put makeup on and make yourself look presentable. It's like, oh, that's a good point. I never thought of that. Some wives would be offended by that, but he's absolutely right. He makes the joke to me all the time that I'm the only person he knows that takes their makeup off to go out. <laughs> like, yeah. I put a little bit of makeup on for filming face to face YouTube videos sometimes, not very often. It's usually just a little bit of powder and a away I go kind of thing, but I'm really paying attention here to what I'm doing. It's been such a long time since I've coloured something like this. Uh, Cause the last few few pages in this book there hasn't been as much foliage. So it has been a minute or two since I uh, did something of this this leafy scale. I'm at, I've actually got leaf burnout on a personal level just now. All the leaves on the trees have started to turn and there are some absolutely gorgeous colours in there but we have a lot of really big trees in our garden and of course those leaves all have to go somewhere and let's just say Larry the leaf blower, that's his name by the way, Larry the leaf blower and I are, are having a whale of a time. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time with them in the garden. And I keep looking up at the big beech tree that's called Olga. Most of you will know by now nearly everything that I have has a name. And Olga the beech tree is massive and I am absolutely dreading her shedding her leaves because that's going to go on forever. That is going to be epic because she's gigantic. So yeah, me and Larry, we've got our work cut out for her. For us. I'm kind of thinking to myself as I go along here, this green that I'm doing just now is probably going to be the darkest part of this whole page. So I'm just in my head, I'm mentally calculating other colours that I'm going to use in the other sections so that I can keep this, you know, so I can keep a bit of contrast. So that's kind of like whirling away in the background. I haven't come into anything concrete yet right enough, but... You know, I'm going to jump over this side and just carry on a bit down here. Oh, that's so funny. I really hope you guys can hear that. I hope that the microphone picked that up. That was almost like a trumpet. <laughs> I'll need to go and see what's wrong with her. <laughs> it's like singing me a song. Ooh! Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. It's looking quite good as I did before. I'm just going to do this bottom section and then I'll catch you guys back up. 
So I'm quite happy with this uh, greenery here now and I've just made a little start on my owly friend. I had to stop there and go and check that cow to see she was okay and she's just making noise for the sake of making noise, she's fine. So with my little owly friend here, I'm just working away with, uh, with putty beige and light umber and I'm just doing this feathers and the tiny orange bits you can see I used yellowed orange this is my last remaining old school Prismacolor pencil uh, so you can't really see the writing anything on it but it is yellow or yellowed orange which is PC1002 so in these paler parts I've put down a layer of the putty beige first and then kind of flicked on some of the light umber on top and then just going back over it. And with the this little section in his chest and on top of his head, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm still using the same pencils, but I'm going in with the light umber first as the base layer. Just like this. And then I'm going to put the, the putty beige over the top of it. Again, I'm just kind of like skiddling that round there because there's not a lot of room. And then I just want to sort of accent the where the overlap in the feathers is with the the light umber light umber yeah i keep going to say burnt umber that's a different pencil entirely <laughs> again i'm not fussing a lot over this it's such a small area and then his wings i'm just going to make straight light umber because they're tucked away in behind here we can't see much of that going on and then we've got these tiny little feathery areas on top of his head as well and for this section round his eyes, I'm going to grab Jasmine, oh, which is another favourite of mine. It's a really versatile pencil. I'll pop a little bit of that Jasmine down. And then just round the outsides, I'm grabbing this putty beige. Just make a little semicircle there. And then grabbing the light umber again, I'm going to sharpen this to a really, really fine point. A really pointy point. And I just want to kind of like outline this bottom part of his eyes. So I'm going in the tiniest circular motions, but I'm following the curve of the circle around his eyes. I hope you can see that. I've taken the autofocus off because when you're this close, it doesn't like it. Okay, I think that's fairly good. Hopefully you can see that okay. I'll just do the same on this side. I'm trying to keep my hand out the way so that you can see me doing it. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> it's so lovely. Right, let's have a wee zoom out again. That's better. Okay, so he's poking out from behind the leaves there. He's quite happy. The last thing I want to do just before we shut up shop for the day. Obviously, I'm not going to get this finished today. Nowhere near. When I'm finished it, I will post it on Instagram as I always do. But a lot of people ask me about backgrounds all the time and what I use. So I would like to do a sort of dark purple. So I'm thinking um, dioxazine was probably the best colour. I did lose my dioxazine pencil. And uh, I don't know how or where it disappeared to. So I ended up having to buy a new one. And lo and behold, the other one turned up and it had fallen down the back of one of my storage units. I don't even know what it was doing, Lewis, but never mind. So basically, when you're going to do backgrounds like this, you don't need a sharp point. It's not an issue. So I, I'm kind of like middle, middle of the road here, I think. Not too sharp, not too unsharp. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. And uh, what I want to do is sort of ha have it quite deep and dark in where these leaves are and fade it out to almost nothing. And this is basically just patience. So I'm just going to pick a sensible spot to start. I should really start on this side and work away from what I've been doing. So this is the ideally you just want to do this in layers. So as always, I'm just starting the way I always do. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. And just the way I would normally do is I like to put a light layer of colour down to start with and just in a tiny little section like this. And then I start to pull it out very gently and this lets me decide where I want it to stop. You know, so how far out from where the sort of core of the, the image is. So I think I kind of want it, the, the edge of these leaves here, you know, the most protruding leaves, protruding, that's a good word, like this one here. I don't think I would want it much past there, so I'll maybe call that the boundary. And then all I want to do is just start going back over. 
Now I'm not varying my pressure, I'm still using light pressure and we're just going to build up in layers but every time we add a layer we're going to stop short of where we went to last time. So the edge is just here, I think you'll just be able to see that and no more. So when I'm doing this I'm using little circular motions but I'm going to stop about half a centimetre away from where I did last time and then I'm just going to do the same thing again and what you find is that that gives you a really nice transition without having to work too hard to blend it out. Now you do have to kind of tweak it as you go along because you're going to be following the contours of all your different shapes here. It is going to, you know, you are going to have to go back and kind of adjust things a little bit. But this is a really great, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a really great way to start something like this. So just starting there, I've come round, round the corner here <laughs> and I'm just going to do this first layer again and bring it out roughly. And it doesn't, like the edge doesn't have to be perfect because you're kind of fading it out. If it's a little bit uneven, you know, it kind of goes in and out like this, it's not a big deal. You just want that impact of the nice dark colour in at the, the root of your drawing. The other thing you can do with this edge, if you don't like how you've faded it out or where you've stopped it, you can always take a colourless blender and just kind of like squish it out from the direction of the picture. And that's usually quite a nice way to, you know, to sort of fade it out as well. I tend not to bother with things like that though. So this section here isn't going to be as dark as this part in here because it's further out. So we have to kind of remember that as well as we go along. If you stick with a light hand when you're doing this though, that's not going to be a problem because once you've kind of gone all the way around, you can see if there's any patches that are too light and you can just go back over them. Whereas if you go in really heavy handed from the get go, it's very difficult to lighten it up. Um, you know, your eraser will only do so much, especially with a colour like dioxazine purple. You're not going to be able to lift a huge amount of the pigment. But see, prismas are great for this. They really, really are because they're so soft and they blend so easily. They, you know, this is one of the easiest pencils to do this with. As long as you don't press too hard because if you press hard, that's when you start to run into problems. So you can see I'm going back up to where I was. But again, this is just helping to give this a bit of depth and let it pop out a little bit. Now, the main issue that I used to run into when I, when, you know, when I was a, a newer colourist was I would start something like this and it would be going really well. And the more and more I went on, I got this like horrible urgency and this need to like to finish it. And I started to rush and I was, I usually ended up really, really dissatisfied with you know, my final result and it's because I hadn't taken my time. If you get that feeling, and I know a lot of people do, get up and walk away, just walk away, go and take a break, come back to it tomorrow and do another little bit. As long as you can find a sensible place to stop, then there's no reason for you not to do it in a couple of sittings, especially if, like me, you get bored quite easily of doing repetitive things. It's one of the reasons I don't like to colour mandalas, I don't really like colouring anything with a pattern on it as well. And funnily enough, there's a page in this book that I absolutely detested. The page itself came out wonderfully. I was really pleased with how it came out, but I was absolutely bored rigid when I was doing it. And I was said, and it was the, a page full of acorns and they're all like at different angles. And I said, if I ever see another acorn, it'll be too soon. Lo and behold. That was a long time ago now, though. I think I've recovered from my, 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 my acorn trauma. <laughs> it wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it at all. I said, at least it turned out well, though, but... I was like, oh God, never again. <laughs> please, please no more acorns. And I think like a page after that or two pages after that there was more acorns, I wasn't pleased. <laughs> okay, so you can see the kind of effect I'm getting here and it's a lovely soft finish and I like, I really enjoy the look of this, like the aesthetic of it. But it does take a little bit of time. I'll just keep working our way around gently though. I always, when I'm working on a circular piece like this, I think about it in quarters, you know, like quarter pieces of a pie and I tend to do a quarter at a time. So if I could get that done, then that would be pretty good. So the other thing is in here and amongst all the foliage, you have to decide where your sort of cut off line is. So I've got this little section in here and I think I'm going to make that really dark purple in there. This little section in here. And then I can maybe bring it there. And up to the bottom of the owl would probably be a good place as well. So again, just a, a wee bit of prior planning it stops you getting stressed out about it as well. So if you just look ahead slightly and decide what you're doing, that can sometimes be really helpful. Yeah, I think that's a good place to stop. So in here now, I'm back to lighter layers because I'm going to feather this all out here. 
There's some quite fiddly bits in here as well. Oh, goodness me. Squeeze it in there, it'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do this part in here. I think I'm going to leave it. I think I want to leave, leave it alone. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry at all. That was a good one. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Okay, so thinking about my, my quarter of the pie theory, I just want to add a little bit more in here. This is what I mean. You, you do, you keep going back to bits because you see things and you're like, wait a minute. Okay, uh, yeah, just going back to the quarter of the, the pie analogy, I'm going to bring this up to this leaf here and that looks like about a quarter and I think I'll just stop there. So I'm going to turn this round slightly because I don't want to smudge any of this and with it being a dark colour that is highly likely. So I'll just head up to this little section here. If you're struggling for ideas for your background colour, uh, normally I would leave the background till last. I've just done this today so that, uh, you know, I was giving you guys a bit of variety with this video as well and something that you might be able to use in your own colouring. But if you're not sure on a background colour, uh, if you wait until the end of your drawing and see what other colours you've used in the picture first, and if you've used a reasonably limited palette, it's easy enough for you to pick out something using a colour wheel. If you find that you've ended up with a lot of different colours, it's really up to you. Normally in that situation, if I've used, you know, like every colour of the rainbow, which does happen sometimes, especially with busier pictures, for the background, I either tend to pick a really, really, really dark colour. Uh, sometimes I go with black acrylic paint as well to make all the colours pop out. Or I go for a really desaturated pastel shade so that it doesn't interfere with everything that's going on in the picture and take away from, you know, the main focal point. So that that's generally what I would do if, uh, you know, if I was picking a background now. Everybody's different though. Like everyone has different sort of ways of doing it and different things that they do when they're deciding on a background. But it's just one of those things I thought it was worth mentioning if you're one of the people that is quite indecisive about picking a background. I don't know whether that's helpful or not, but that's just what I tend to do. I do tend to like quite delicate, you know, pastel shades and desaturated colours generally, and that, that sort of spills over into my drawing as well, so that might have a lot to do with it. So that this is kind of out of the norm for me, but I know that it's going to work well against all the greens that I'm using, which is why I've picked it. Right. Okay, there we go. So I hope that's given you an idea. And again, you can see because it's really dark in here, what it's done is it's pushing the leaves forward. They're popping out at you. And this is obviously the focal point. And because it's going to be dark all the way around, it's going to draw your eye into this white part in the centre where the writing is, which is exactly what we want. So I'm quite pleased with that. And I'm just that little bit closer to getting this book finished. I am absolutely terrified of doing the DDs at the end and I deliberately wanted them to be the last page because I'm pretty sure I will not want to colour in this book ever again after that and obviously I won't need to because it will be done by that point. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed yourself today, guys. I think maybe you've learned something or you've just enjoyed listening to my rambling. Either way, I want to thank you very much for watching if you've made it this far. If you could chuck me a thumbs up underneath the video, that would be great. It really helps me out. Please stay safe and take care of each other. And I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. Have a great day, everyone, and bye for now.